Hi there, I'm Kim Weber with the Kimby Gourmet. Today, we're gonna to be making darker chocolate brownies with brown butter. And these are fabulous. And I'll just tell you something. We made these earlier this week and the video didn't turn out so well, so we're doing it again. So it means we've had brownies twice in a week. But they're delicious. Right now, just sitting over this brown butter, I'm about ready to drink it. So the first thing we did was we beat three room temperature large eggs in the bowl of the standing mixer. That way they've got a lot of lift to them and they're the only real leavening agent that these have. There's no baking powder or anything like that. We've got cocoa, flour, all-purpose flour, salt, and that's it. And then we've got sugar. We've got the brown butter that we just talked about and vanilla. So right now, what I'm gonna do to these eggs that have already been beaten for 10 minutes. That's why we're starting now, because y'all didn't want to see 10 minutes of beaten eggs, I'm real sure. So let's add in some real vanilla. And, oh, I know what the, I knew there was a bonus ingredient that it is espresso powder and if you can get espresso powder that comes you know there's Italian I use the one that's just a, uh, comes from Florida and they use it to make Cuban coffee and it's delicious even as a cup of coffee so that's the that I kept thinking there's one more thing in there that's what it is and it's delicious and anytime you're making something with dark chocolate or any kind of chocolate add a little bit of that and it really will sing it up so now we're going to add the brown butter which has come to room temperature because you don't want to have anything would have a cho chance to cook your eggs so now you'll see these little brown bits in the bottom that's what makes the butter brown, and that is nothing but flavor. And you want to add that because that will make foot. Listen, when I first learned how to brown butter, I didn't realize that. So I didn't really learn how to brown butter. I learned how to melt butter. So anyway, use that. And I'm going to go ahead. I found a, a video from Sarah Carey at Everyday Foods, Martha Stewart's Everyday Foods. And she shows you how to brown butter. And I'm gonna link that below because I could do it, but I'll miss something. And then you all won't think it's a big deal. So I wanna go ahead and do that for you. So anyway, got that added to it. I'm gonna let a little more, a little tiny bit of drop of vanilla. I wanna get every bit of the flavor. And when I start, this is a little pan of brownies. It's, it come, it's going in, you'll see it. It's going in something that was called a brownie and biscuit pan. And it's about half the size of the brownies that I usually make. And I had to think about how to amp up the, the, fla the flavor. So I took every ingredient and thought about what can I do. And one of the things I could do was to the melted butter, I can make it be brown butter. So that's step one. Now well, I'll go through the rest of them. But I'm gonna turn this on, let it rip, and I'll come back to you when we get through with it. And since the butter's melted in this one, you're not really creaming it so much as combining it. But I thought I would sift the sugar, get the lumps out of it as well, and throw it in here. We're using an organic sugar, which that's what gives it its, it, why it looks golden. It hasn't been through a couple of the refinement steps. So I'm going to turn this on, let it go until combined, and I'll be back with you. And I sifted it together and then I took a whisk and, and, and sifted it with a little bit, bit more air. And last week when we tried to do this, it was like a puff of smoke 
coming up at me. So I'm trying to learn this sport. And I've got ideas. I think I'm going to... And you don't have to do this at home if you don't want to, because this is going to make a mess. But let's go ahead and try that first little bit, stir it in a little bit, and see if that makes a difference. And I'm just adding this in in small amounts, because you do have to kind of incorporate it in with those eggs and sugar, butter, and want to make it into a little bit homogenous so it won't fly up at you. And this one, it could cause trouble. <laughs> Everything is a tendency. But okay. Well, I'm going to continue to add this stuff and then I'll be back with you at the end. We made sure not to beat those too long because we don't want to toughen up that flour and cause it to develop glutens and make our brownies tough. We want them to be as tender as we can get them. We do still need to add walnuts and since I got the kind that are already kind of chipped up for baking, I don't want to run them through with the, the paddle beater because it might pulverize them and I don't want that. I want you to be able to feel the texture of the walnut. So I'm going to add this to the dirty dish bowl. Take this and you'll have a chance with this process to kind of pull down anything that's on the side of the bowl that needs to be mixed in and mix it in as well. But there's probably, I mean, when, when you do it like this, when you do this many walnuts and this smaller pan of brownies, each brownie is just going to be loaded with walnuts. Um, if somebody has nut allergies, you really do need to have something to take up the space in the volume of this. I would suggest maybe I found some salted caramel chip. So the little brownie pan is to be prepared with a um, little piece of parchment paper that just covers the bottom. You spray it with your cooking spray. I use coconut oil. I've got brownies all over me. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is put the brownie mixture it's really fudgy it's a real fudgy kind of solid mixture and it'll be real good let me just do this and I'll come back to you guys when I get get through with it. Okay, we've got the brownies now. Put them in the pan, got them out of the bowl with a spatula. Used an offset spatula to kind of smooth them out. It takes, it take, took a lot of work <laughs> to get them nice and smooth. They were, they're gonna be good though. We're gonna put them in a 350 oven for between 20 and 25 minutes. That's gonna depend on your oven. Now, one thing that I'm gonna do after about 10 minutes, I'm gonna switch them. I'm gonna kind of turn the pan because my oven sits kind of off kilter a little bit. The house is a little, un the house is old. It's a little unlevel and makes things kind of be one-sided if you don't watch it. So I'll check mine at the 10 minute mark and at the 20 minute mark and see how we're doing if they need another three to five minutes, something like that. So let me go put these in the oven and I'll come back to you when I get them out. Okay. These smell so good that I would love to cut into them right now. But we've learned from experience 
that they have to cool thoroughly before you cut them. And you've got that little piece of parchment paper on the bottom. It's going to help you pull them out when it's time to cut them so you can get a good clean, you don't have to cut them down in the pan. You can put them out on a, on a cutting board and cut them like that. And that's what I would suggest doing, which you can't do until they're cooled thoroughly. The other thing about these, they get better and better and better as the wheat goes. And they're so good that you can't eat a half the pan in a day. They're really rich and they're really fudgy and they're just chock full of nuts. But the best thing to do, I think, is let them cool overnight because we're making these at night and let them cool overnight and then tomorrow, you know, put some foil over them before you go to sleep. Tomorrow you can cut, you know, take them out and cut them. And that's what I would suggest you. So thank you for spending a little bit of time with us today. Give us a thumbs up for a like, subscribe when you can. And as Warren Zevon said, enjoy every sandwich. I am told it comes back to you many fold. Just be true, and all that sweet stuff comes back to you. Be the apple of somebody's eye. Be that.